For 12 years, Elaine Spall has been a fixture on the Rochester City Council. But it was last month when the political leader announced it was time to hang up her political hat and refocus her energy on a different kind of public service. Spall is also the executive director of the Center for Youth. Her decision to not seek re-election is due to an intense desire to support the needs of young parents facing homelessness at a time when agencies supporting area youth are either closing programs or facing financial hardship. Elaine Spall joins me now to discuss the critical needs for youth in our community and why time is of the essence to get those needs met. And Elaine, welcome back to the show. Thank Great you to have so you much. Here. It's so good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, so your bio includes everything from <laughs> Fulbright scholar, writer, attorney, educator. Uh, just, that's just a small handful of the many things that you have done or that you do. Yeah. And I'm curious as to what inspired you to add politician to that list back in 2007 when you were first elected to city council. Well, you know, I was recruited uh, by Bob Duffy and a bunch of people who said we need someone smart and someone feisty. And I said, well, you know, I'm not going to agree with everything you guys want to do. You know, I'm not going to say yes to everything. And they said, we're counting on that. Uh, so I said, no, 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 no. And, you know, they kept sort of calling and coming by. And I said, no, no, no. My husband was like, I see them in front of our house. He's out there. Go away. Go away. Leave my wife alone. But I said, you know, Lois Geis had served for 21 years. The least I could do would serve for four and get somebody ready to take my seat. Uh, four became eight, eight became 12. And because we have no term limits, you have to self-monitor. And I thought to myself, not only is it time for somebody else uh, to represent our district, which is changing and growing, and it's been such a successful uh, transformation, really, of the East District over 12 years. Every neighborhood from downtown, where we see enormous growth, uh, to some of our neighborhoods, even in, in the borders that are more of the Northeast, like uh, on Beachwood, those everywhere you look, the houses and the neighborhoods are thriving. So I felt it was time. Yeah. Um, and then, as you know, I was seeing and faced with what really is a crisis. And it's a crisis of conscience for me. It's a moral crisis. It's a spiritual crisis. And I felt like the Center for Youth deserved my full attention again. Talk about what you mean. when you, this, this crisis involves the youth in our city. Yeah. Paint a picture, uh, because I know we've talked about this before. You've said, you know, the media can cover so much, but there are, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of layers to this. What does our community need to understand that we may not know right now? Well, I'll tell you, I know exactly when it was. It was the first week of November. I had not made a decision yet. And I was at our little crisis nursery, um, and there was a 17-year-old young woman there. Um, and she was sitting uh, by the side of the crib, and there was a four-month-old baby in the crib. And at about a quarter after eight, I was there for a program. She got up and said, Missy Lane, I need a bus pass. I'm going back to the shelter. And I said, what's up? And she said, well, I'm homeless, and there's no place for me to go with my baby, so I'm going to leave him here. Um, and I'm going to go back to the shelter. And I will tell you, at that moment, it was so heartbreaking to me. Yeah. Uh, she was teary-eyed, and I kept saying, he'll be fine. And she said, he'll be fine, but I don't know if I can get back here tomorrow. I might not see him for two days. Will he remember me? Now, you know, in this community, this wealthy, generous, enormously compassionate community, can we handle that? I couldn't. So I went home, and I said to my husband, who, by the way, has been pushing me to get off, enough is enough for 12 years, right? He's like, we need you home, and we have babies in San Francisco and, and all that. Um, and I told him, and he said, you need to refocus. And I said, I do. I really need to refocus. I need to raise an enormous amount of money to keep these shelters going, to add more shelters, to put myself in everybody's face. People probably turn and run the other way when they see me coming, because they know I'm going to tell them yeah. a story or ask them for something, and I don't care. This is my mission. Um, you only have to have that kind of experience once to know that you are called at this moment to do something. Now, I can't do it without the Center for Youth team, which is amazing, yeah. Yeah. totally amazing. Yeah. Let me, I want to ask you something. Yeah. You, you wrote an op-ed piece yes. at the beginning of the year. And it yes. was your dream for yeah. 2019. Right. And, and you said in so many words, and I've got the quote here, you said, our focus and our headlines are more likely to accompany a new popular night spot than the closing of emergency placements for parenting teens. Now is the time to do something. In that same piece, you mentioned how 
how we look at poverty is in so many words misplaced. Talk a little bit, explain well, what you, you know, mean I, by I, that. I hope that I didn't, uh, you know, upset all the wonderful new restaurants and because I love them and you know, and I <laughs> hang out in them and I'm so thrilled about them. But I was just, I was trying to make a point and, and you know, I'm sort of a broken record around this. Um, let's say for example, we, we lose an airlines that is getting us to, to Florida to vacation spots. People would be up in arms and we should be. And uh, or if, if a very popular night spot closes, you know we miss it. We should be we should be upset. But we also need to add on to that message the message of what happens when agencies and other governmental units or whoever decide to go in a different direction or when funding is cut. So because we didn't really talk about it much, we saw over the last really 18 months to three years a loss of services, emergency services, and nobody really noticed. It wasn't headlines. It wasn't shocking. If we have young women who are not able to work, who are not able to finish their education, we will not move the poverty needle. We just won't. We know that is where our population is struggling. Our, our babies aren't poor. Our kids aren't poor. Their mothers are poor. That's our goal. So when we have a 17-year-old who's trying to finish school, staying in the shelter with her five-month-old baby in the crisis nursery, we should find a way to keep them together. And, and this community can do that. When it comes to, you said this community, we can do it. We, we can, can do find it. find a way. We can do it. Are, are there solutions and resources that are right in front of us that, that we don't realize are right there? Or is this a matter of us coming together and saying, okay, we need to create something. We yeah. need to try something. Let's do something different. Well, there's three things. Number one, you and I know that Fashion Week of Rochester, which is the coolest thing, <laughs> is supporting some it of these awesome. shelters. Yeah. Yeah. And that is one thing yeah. that, and I was meeting with some developers last night about a project, and they said, by the way, how can we help you? So people want to help. Mm -hmm. And Fashion Week is an is entry into having this amazing Rochester while we raise money. So that's one thing. The second thing is that we want to try something innovative, and that is we're looking for families and this I think we can do, who will be emergency care providers up to three to six months for a teen mom and a baby. Who and this is the extended host, host home homes. family. This is the new program that new you're working program. on. So we're, we're starting to talk about it. We've yeah. got some money uh, from some agencies and also some from uh, foundations are stepping up. We want to see if this community has really got what it takes. We think it does. What if we had 10 or 15 families across Monroe County who said, I could take in a 17-year-old and a baby for a few months and, and host them while we figured out emergency housing and more stable housing and talk, versus versus separating them, right? Right. right? Talk about that. So what can happen in that three to six month right. span of time that people may not wrap their minds around when it comes yeah. to that actually is, can be a transformational period? Because it could be insight into what a family unit looks like that maybe has never been something that child has seen uh, coming out of uh, trauma or coming out of a abandonment Maybe they've never seen a loving family, uh, a couple, um, an intimate relationship that is meaningful and powerful. And maybe they don't know how to feed or change a baby. Maybe they're not used to being alone. Maybe they could have, you know, a family around them. Now, family is it's not their family forever, right. but we do think that there is something powerful yeah. in a messaging of we care about you we, and we believe in you. You know, one of the things I was reading an article about how we've lowered our expectations uh, there are people that think public education is dying because we've lowered our expectations. We want to raise our mm -hmm. expectations for this community and for our young mothers. They love their children just as much as we do. They are not bad mothers. Yeah. They are not uh, abandoning their kids. They just don't have an option. So that program is a powerful program. I think it's an amazing program. And we're also adding another 14-unit uh, apartment building nearby here, actually, for teen mothers as well. So I want to yeah. go back to extended host homes yeah. because I think it's just an incredible concept. Yeah. And I guarantee there's someone watching right now and they're thinking to themselves, um, I don't know if this connects to me. I have kids. I live in the suburbs. It seems more like a city problem. What would you say to that person to basically explain to them this impacts Everyone. Because crisis does not discriminate. Crisis does not discriminate. We are all in this together. You know, there's a big, huge boat called Rochester and Monroe County, and if you begin to put a hole here, we will all sink. 
we got to stay together on this. And, you know, we have uh, obviously suburban families. Uh, let's say that you're a family who has an extra bedroom because your, your teenage uh, daughter has gone off to college, right? And you, uh, between September and Christmas, could take a mom and a baby for a few months. We want you. Uh, you're, you're a single couple. You've never had children. Your grandparents, your, gra your grandchildren like mine, I can't take them because I'm not home <laughs> enough. Uh, but, you, you know, you have a way to help. Uh, it's not foster care. It's not a 12-month commitment. Um, we would be helping. Uh, we'd buy a crib and maybe give you diapers and make sure you had everything you needed so it didn't cost you anything. There might be a small stipend. It, it's not for someone who's trying to make some, some money right. off of this because that's not the, mm -hmm. the point. Uh, we believe that families can do this. Right. That is an important call to action, and we're going to close yes. on that. Yeah. Uh, we are out of time, but Elaine, thank you so much for joining me, and thank yeah. you for your passion for our young people in this community. So to learn more about this program, to get involved in the work for, with Center for Youth, please go to centerforyouth.net and learn more.